What's up everyone, I'm Tim. This is my channel 40 times around and today we're going to talk about how to add electrical accessories to your motorcycle without overdrawing from your charging system. Stick around. Okay, so we're talking about adding electrical accessories. This could be anything from auxiliary lights to, you know, strobing brake lights or uh, GPS, any kind of heated gear, charging your phone, stuff like that. Uh, anything that draws electricity that didn't come factory on the motorcycle. That's basically what we're talking about. And so first we're going to talk about what you can actually add in terms of amount and then we're going to talk about how you can actually find that so that you don't end up overdrawing from your charging system and then we're going to talk a little bit about how to add things uh, in other words wiring them in and all of that now real quick before we jump into this i want to give a huge shout out to my patron gus who came up with this brilliant idea for a a video for me. I was actually part of the monthly Q&A, but it was such a great question that I wanted to turn it into a video because I think it's such an in-depth and such an important topic to cover. So huge shout out to Gus. Okay, so when thinking about adding electrical accessories to your motorcycle, we need to look at the charging system. And to understand the charging system, we'll need to know a few things first. Now, the first thing we need to understand is the relationship between amps, volts, and watts. The short, not very technical answer to this is that amps multiplied by volts equals watts. Now, a motorcycle operates at around 12 volts. So to find watts from amps, we multiply by 12. And to find amps from watts, we'll divide by 12. A quick example, a charging system like mine that has an output of 23 amps at idle is the equivalent of 23 times 12 volts, so 276 watts at idle. Now that we have that out of the way, we'll need to know a little bit about your motorcycle's charging system. Now there's three components involved in this charging system, and only two of them actually matter for adding accessories, but I'm gonna mention all three just for the sake of being thorough. And the first one is gonna be the battery, and this basically has the job of starting the bike and also storing power. And it's also gonna compensate for any lack in the alternator's output. Now this is why overloading your motorcycle will kill your battery. Once the battery starts compensating for a lack of output from the alternator, the battery will just drain and drain and drain, and the voltage will drop and drop until there's no power left. Now the second component is the alternator. Now it's okay to exceed the charging output for a little while. The battery will take care of the gap, but only for a short time. If it continues for too long, that's when it becomes an issue. Now there's two types of alternators which is irrelevant, and most likely your alternator is made up of three components, but those don't matter either. What we need to know is the alternator is responsible for charging the battery as the bike runs, and it will also feed anything drawing power as the bike is operating. For example, a headlight draws power from the alternator. It's important to note that the output will change based on RPM of the engine. In other words, the output at idle is much lower than the output at say 4,000 RPM. This is important because driving around town in stop and go traffic and cruising down the highway at a steady 80 will have very different capabilities when it comes to supporting your spaceship strobe lights, your heated socks, and your microwave. Okay, the third and final component involved in the charging system, and also the irrelevant one for our purposes, is the rectifier or regulator. Just for the sake of being thorough, like I said, uh, the purpose of the rectifier regulator is to convert the alternating current from your alternator and turn it into direct current to power the bike's components and charge the battery. We can ignore this from here forward. Now that we have a basic understanding of the charging system, we need to do a little digging and find some information on the motorcycle in question. Let's use my bike as an example, a 2015 R1200GS BMW. Now BMW doesn't like to volunteer too much information, so some of this may be available in the service manual or owner's manual. Some may need to be Googled and some may need to be just guessed at uh, because they're really that secretive at BMW. <laughs> so we need to find the total output of the charging system. Now this was in my manual, it was pretty easy to find, and it was 23 amps at idle and 35 amps at 6,000 RPM. My bike redlines at 8,000 RPM, so I'm usually nowhere near six. I tend to hover around three, four, and sometimes five on the highway. Now I'm gonna split the difference to kind of err on the safe side, and so we can factor in charging output at let's say 29 amps. So we can use our formula to convert this to watts since most motorcycle accessories will tell you their specific power draw in watts. So 29 times 12 volts gives us a total output of 348 watts. Let's make it a nice round 350. Now, just so we know for future reference, the range of output from idle to 6,000 RPM is gonna be 276 to 420 watts. 
The next step is to find what spare wattage we have for farkles and accessories. And we're gonna do this by working backwards from what we use all the time, no matter what, just to run the bike. Now we're gonna go down the list of things drawing power whenever the motorcycle is running. Uh, we don't need to factor in things like turn signals that aren't always on, uh, but definitely factor in like the headlight and the instrument cluster, uh, things like that. So the common loads we wanna look at will be the headlight, the light over your license plate, the running brake light or tail light, the instrument cluster and computer, and also the fuel pump if you don't happen to have a carburetor and the cooling fan and the ignition. And like I said, this information will require a little bit of digging, uh, but my bike looks like this. The headlights, 55 watts, brake light, 10 watts, license plate, five watts, instrument cluster, 10 watts. Now this is kind of a high guess, I couldn't find the exact number. The ignition coming in at 25 watts, also a guess, based on a five amp draw. Uh, also the computer, 25 amps, total guess. Radiator fan, 50 watts. And so this gives us a grand total of 240 watts. Now we can subtract that from our total charging system output, which like we said, was an estimated 350 watts on average under normal operating conditions. That gives us a cushion of 110 watts. And this is approximate and it's not guaranteed, but this is a good base idea of our excess output capacity. Now let's look at some common accessories that we could be using and their average draw. A GPS would be about five watts. Auxiliary lights are gonna be somewhere around 50 watts. Heated vest or any kind of heated gear, each piece would be about 85 watts. Phone chargers, about three watts. Heated grips coming in at about 50 watts. And a radar detector coming in at two watts, so definitely plug one of those in. Now remember, most of these numbers are estimated, but this gives us a total of 195 watts, which far exceeds the output. In other words, it's not wise to run all of these things at one time. Definitely not for a long period. And remember, I tried to overestimate on the draw, so there is a hidden built-in cushion there. I would recommend that if it's really cold out and you wanna use your heated vest and, and your heated grips, you probably don't wanna be turning on your high beams, your auxiliary lights all at the same time for any kind of extended period of time, unless you like having a dead battery. Now let's say you wanna plug more stuff in. Well, there's a few things you can do. For one, you can change light bulbs out to LED. That's gonna use less wattage and give you a bigger cushion. Now if your motorcycle doesn't have a low beam that shuts off when you turn on your high beams, you can actually add a circuit for this. Also, if you have a fuel injected motorcycle, your fuel filter can actually cause your fuel pump to draw up to double its normal load. So make sure to keep an eye on that. One more side note on output related topics that I did not mention is amp hours of your battery. An amp hour basically tells us how long a battery will last when being drawn from at a specific rate. So a 12 amp hour or AH battery can put out 1.2 amps for 10 hours or 12 amps for one hour before it's dead. This is something good to keep in mind if you're knowingly exceeding the output of the alternator. Uh, this can help you avoid running too much for too long. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about wiring accessories into a motorcycle. So there's a lot of topics to cover on this, but let's start with where to get power, and then we'll kind of get into the how of it. But first off, a lot of bikes are using CAN bus, and this is important to know about your motorcycle if you're adding things to the electrical system. CAN bus works by communicating through the wires in the bike. If you add to the power draw on this system, you will set off faults, and honestly, it's better to just not mess with this stuff at all. That is, of course, unless you're adding factory accessories, meaning manufacturer approved. My BMW has a socket for adding additional accessories like a GPS or auxiliary lights, if they're BMW approved. Unfortunately, there's only one socket, which is a huge pain. Now, I found something really cool when I was doing a little research for this video, and BMW actually makes a splitter for this socket. And I'll link to it down below if you guys wanna check it out. If you have a BMW and you're trying to add more than just a GPS, uh, this is gonna come in super handy. I've actually been putting off wiring in my auxiliary lights for this exact reason. They actually aren't that expensive either, so this is super handy if you own a Beamer. There are other options though, and if you're looking to add lights and other accessories that don't have that connector anyways, then this next option is for you. Before we talk about the next option though, we need to discuss the risk of plugging directly into your battery. A lot of accessory manufacturers will actually tell you to wire straight into the battery, but this should be avoided at all costs. Uh, for one, if you're adding multiple things, then it will quickly become just a total mess of wires and just an absolute rat's nest. And sometimes this can actually cause shorts or can cause the terminals to loosen over time. However, the most important reason that you don't wanna hook directly to the battery 
is that then the accessory will always be powered. So let's say you leave your auxiliary lights on and you walk away from your bike, you could come back to a dead battery. There's nothing switching the accessory off once the bike stops running. It's not like your headlight, for example, where as soon as the bike is off, the headlight turns off. Now it's also possible, even if you remember 100% of the time to shut this accessory off, someone could bump into it, a kid could run up and flip a switch on your bike, and turn that accessory on and you're gonna end up with a dead battery. So how you can switch this off is by using a relay. You might be wondering, Tim, what's a relay? Now the short answer is that it's a switch that controls another switch. The first switch is controlled by your bike's ignition being on or off in this case, and that switch in turn switches another switch or a solenoid, and that powers the accessory. In other words, it's a switch, and that's all that's really important here. <laughs> but it just gets wired so that the relay is on when the ignition is on and this way the accessory is only on when the bike is on. Now this relay is gonna be the switch for this accessory, but if we're adding multiple accessories, then we should consider a distribution block system that you can hook all your accessories into one place. And this is also gonna power everything down once you turn off the motorcycle, because it will all be downstream of the relay. Okay, now let's briefly get into the how of it all. Starting with running new wires on your motorcycle, uh, there's some common mistakes when running wires that will cause malfunctions and failures. They're gonna be things like, heat from poor insulation uh, or from being too close to hot parts of the bike like the exhaust. Also tension on wires and connectors from poor uh, wire routing choice. Also loose connections. Also any kind of buildup of rust or oxidation or any kind of moisture can all cause failures as well. So keep that in mind when you're choosing where to run your wires. You want to keep an eye on moving parts as well when you're choosing where to put your wires. Now even putting wires under your seat, you'd be surprised that every time you sit down on your seat, you're actually moving two parts together. So if you have a wire pinched under there, you're gonna ruin it and you're gonna get shorts and it's gonna be a nightmare. Now, handlebars are another common area of movement that it can affect wiring. Cheap connectors should be avoided if you wanna avoid failure. And also make sure to connect and disconnect properly every time because you'll end up pulling the wire right out of the connectors. So those are just a few tips on wiring your accessories. Now another pro tip is to test everything before tightening bolts and putting panels back on, even before zip tying the wires up. Make sure everything works. This way you don't end up doing double the work if something isn't right. And that's it for accessories and power draw and wiring things in. Hopefully this answers some of your questions. If you have any other questions on this topic, let me know in the comments below. I will be happy to answer them. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you guys got something out of this video. And be sure to subscribe if you guys want to see more videos about motorcycles, camping, traveling, and adventure. And don't forget to hit the little bell. That way you guys don't miss anything whenever I post something new. Thanks for watching. See you soon.